you get the last instructions from the team and get into your spaceship. It's the first spacecraft made on Earth that can move at a speed close to the speed of light. Your task is to visit the most unusual and terrifying places in space and send scientists detailed information about them. And so, your journey begins. Your spacecraft is accelerating, and you dash past the moon. In the distance, you see a small reddish planet. It's Mars. And look at that spectacular giant surrounded by a set of rings. That's Saturn. You wish you could have more time to explore this gas giant, but you have to hurry. You pass by beautiful stars. Some of them are luminous. Others have a reddish hue, and some seem to be dimming. That's Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky on Earth. It's about 8.6 light years away from us, but you're traveling fast, and soon you see Polaris, aka the North Star, which is way further, 431 light years away. Sometimes you manage to spot tiny dots circling these stars. Those are planets. And then, suddenly, you see nothing. At first, you're horrified. Something has gone wrong, and you've accidentally entered a black hole? Has your equipment malfunctioned? Because it seems that at a distance of 700 million light years away from Earth, there's a hole. A blank void with no galaxies, stars, planets, or asteroids. You can't see anything. The void is a roughly spherical region of about 330 million light years across. Our home Milky Way galaxy could fit in there billions of times over. And then it dawns on you. What you're looking at is the mysterious Boats Void. It lies about 700 million light years away from Earth in the constellation of Boats, the herdsman driving the plow around the North Pole. At first, this void was called the Great Nothing, but later it was given its current name. Now we know that galaxies look like a giant web. Most of them are parts of long structures called filaments. Those wind through the cosmos, and when they meet, they form regions with a high concentration of galaxies. These regions are what we know as galaxy clusters, but between these clusters and threads, there are ginormous empty voids that hardly contain any galaxies. Such voids actually make up almost 80% of the observable universe, and most of them are huge, from 30 to 300 million light years wide. The Boats Void is one of the most massive ones. It's even earned the title of Super Void. Astronomers think it might be the result of a few smaller voids merging together. But what could have caused such giant empty areas to appear in the first place? The reason might lie in the origin of the universe. In its early days, all the matter in the universe was packed together quite tightly. Astronomers even think it was something like a uniform soup. But pretty soon, random quantum fluctuations started distributing this matter. Some areas became denser. As a result, their gravitational pull became stronger and they began stealing matter from less dense regions. This made such areas even denser and they kept attracting more and more matter. At the same time, smaller clumps of matter started drifting further away from the center, forming galaxies. After staring at nothingness for some time, you decide to explore other space objects and start the engine of your spacecraft again. There's one kind of space formation you've been looking forward to seeing. Nebulas. Those are gigantic clouds of gas and dust. With time, gravity starts to pull these clumps of dust and gas together. They grow larger and larger, and their gravity gets more powerful. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? One day, this mass becomes so big that it collapses under its own gravity and forms new stars. So, you decide to visit some of the most beautiful nebulas out there. And you start with the Butterfly Nebula. This butterfly's wingspan is more than three light years. And the structure inside the nebula is one of the most complicated ever observed. The central star, a white dwarf, is heated to an incredible 450,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It means it was formed from a gargantuan star, likely more than five times the size of our sun. The white dwarf is surrounded by a thick disk of dust and gas at the equator. 
That's what probably makes the whole structure look like an hourglass or a butterfly. The next place you decide to visit is the Eskimo Nebula, 5,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Gemini. It was discovered more than 200 years ago and got its name for a reason. Its double shell formation looks like a person's face hidden in a padded hood of a winter jacket. But in reality, this parka is a disk of material with a ring of comet-shaped objects. And the tails of these objects stream away from the star at the center of the Eskimo Nebula. The bizarre orange streaks in the outer part of the cloud stretch light years away in all directions. As for the Eskimo's face, even though it resembles a ball of twine, in reality, it's a bubble of material blown into space by the wind of high-speed material produced by the central star. Your next destination is the Ring Nebula. At first sight, it's a giant cloud of dust and gas surrounding an old, almost extinguished star, which does look like a ring. But astronomers say the nebula isn't a bagel, it's a jelly-filled donut. The deep space colorful object more than 2,000 light years away from Earth is actually a ring that wraps around a blue, ball-shaped structure. Each end of the structure sticks out of the ring's opposite sides. Now you can head to a place called the Pillars of Creation. You find it more than 7,000 light years away from Earth in the Eagle Nebula. That's a young cluster of stars just 5.5 million years old, space babies. Once, the Hubble Space Telescope managed to take an image of several dark silhouettes near the nebula center. And now you can see them with your own eyes. Those are the so-called Pillars of Creation, an active star-forming region. And since you've already visited a star-forming region, why don't you drop by a living fossil galaxy? For example, DG Sat 1. It's as big as the Milky Way but it's nearly invisible because its stars are spread out incredibly thinly. But what makes the galaxy so unique is that it's sitting all alone, unlike other galaxies of this kind, which are usually found in clusters. It can mean that DG Sat 1 was formed in a different era, probably a mere 1 billion years after the Big Bang. If it's true, the galaxy is a real living fossil. The next stop on your space sightseeing tour is the Black Widow Pulsar. Just like its spider namesake, this rotating neutron star is munching on its partner, a lightweight brown dwarf star. The more material the pulsar consumes, the more slowly it spins. The energy the neutron star is losing in the process causes the companion star to dwindle. Oh, look at this! That's a stellar nursery in the constellation of Centaurus. But even though this place might be called nursery, it's anything but peaceful or safe. This region, made up of hydrogen and newborn stars, is located in a nebula in the constellation of Centaurus, around 6,500 light years away from Earth. The intense energy these baby stars emit makes hydrogen clouds glow ominous red. This energy is so powerful that it's eating away dark clouds of dust and they're disappearing like lumps of butter on a hot frying pan. You're continuing your journey when you see something absolutely amazing, a cloud of water floating in space. To be more precise, it's a cloud of water vapor surrounding a supermassive black hole 12 billion light years away from Earth. The cloud contains 140 trillion times the entire volume of water on our planet. Astronomers believe this water cloud appeared just 1.6 billion years later than the universe itself. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.